I'm a psychologist at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga uh, with a specialty in the psychology of religion over 40 years. I think that every um, specialty, whether it's law, medicine, psychology, um, has a range of techniques and a range of uh, clients that people deal with and that no single person is an expert in every possible situation. So if somebody had strongly held sincere religious beliefs that would um, make them not want to counsel a person in a particular direction, it seems to me they should have the right not to do that as long as another counselor would be provided for that person. No person is competent to treat every possible situation or every possible type of client. If you think about another specialty like medicine, everybody knows their limits and what they need to do is make a referral when something is outside their particular specialty or limits. I always tell people you can't support freedom of belief unless there are some people with beliefs. So, <laughs> right? If you're going to argue for freedom of belief, right, yeah. then somebody's got to be able to believe something that you don't believe in. Um, I mean, it's well documented. The APA takes essentially anti-religious stances, yeah. and it's well documented that psychologists among the population are the least religious people of all. And so what happens is they can't handle religious issues very well. And then what they try to do is put it within a, a psychological, pathological framing that it's our requirement to enlighten these people to get rid of their naive, superstitious beliefs. Yeah. And, and that's why the whole movement in the APA now is to talk about being spiritual but not religious. And, yeah. and you know, religion is a problem. And, and the notion that religious exemptions don't count because these are rooted in pathological tendencies is just a horrendous problem.